when we meditate, we're dealing with a whole committee in the mind. Lots of different views, lots of different opinions, lots of different desires. We're bringing some order to the committee. Prior to this, the, it's been run by the Robert's Rules of Disorder. Whoever has the most power, whoever is most attractive, gets free pass. As for who's wisest, that's not necessarily the case, if they're let in, or if they are let in only on certain conditions. We've got to change that. We've got to get the wise members in charge, the ones who can recognize when one of the members of the committee is out of hand, trying to take over, and realize, realizing that you don't have to give in the old ways of following certain thoughts all the way to the end, no matter how bitter that end is. That's a rule that's got to change. You need to realize that when a thought comes up, you have the right to go with it or not to go with it. It may have its attractions and you may have your ways of seeing it as attractive. But you have to remind yourself, you're free to think what you want. So why not think thoughts are going to be good for you? This is how the Buddha got on the right path. He started dividing his thoughts into two sorts. Those that would lead to suffering, those that would lead to happiness. The ones that lead to, to suffering, he realized, came from sensuality, came from ill will, came from harmfulness. And those words sound pretty strong, but harmfulness can happen in many different ways in the mind. One of which is just allowing yourself to think thoughts that are going to put you in a bad mood for no purpose at all. But there's a part of the mind that wants to be in a bad mood. It has certain rights when it's in a bad mood of things. Or at the very least, the bad mood is something it knows and is comfortable with. It's like a movie you know it's going to come out. So you watch it again and again and again. But why let those thoughts take, have any control of your mind, any power in your mind? That's one of the reasons why we get the mind focused on the breath, so to pull it out of a lot of those conversations, to give you a place to stay. When there's nothing really good to think about, well, stay with the breath. Think about the breath. Adjust the breath inside so that you're more and more sensitive to this part of the body, this aspect of the body you've got sitting here right now, or which moves around with you as you go through the day. Let that be your default mode. If a thought comes up and you have the right to say yes or no, go with it or not, and you can base your decisions on where it's going to lead. And it's important that you have a sense of well-being in the breath so you don't feel tempted to go with the unskillful things. Because if you're not feeling comfortable now, something comes up and it offers even the least little bit of pleasure, you're going to go running for it. But if you can maintain a sense of well-being with the breath, and you can be more picky and choosy about which thoughts you want to go with. This changes the balance of power in the mind. And the thoughts that used to have free reign in the mind are going to complain. But it's like any revolution. The old powers really resent having their power infringed on. But look at what they've done to you. They've led you to more and more suffering. Just make sure that the newer powers that come in don't follow the track of most revolutions outside, where the people who used to be out of power get into power and then they get corrupt too. You want to make sure you've got wise people, smart people, really smart, not just book smart, but genuinely smart people on the side of the drama in charge of your mind. That way you can be happy. There's a new order inside, and it's meant for your well-being.